on this edition of Locked On Hurricanes. The Carolina Hurricanes won another home game, which comes in no surprise to anyone. The only surprise for this edition, it's the same show, but with a different host. Your Locked On Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the latest edition of Locked On Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you to the thank you for coming and checking out this show. If you are an everydayer, or if you're someone who's kind of new to watching and or listening to this show, or if you're just a caniac who's coming to check out a different podcast, thank you for taking the time to make this episode or make this show your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked on NHL to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms for use for details. I am your host, Zach Martin. I am the uh, beat writer for the Carolina Hurricanes over at the Hockey Writers, and I also host another podcast called The Search Cast, if you've not checked that out before. I am very, very excited to uh, start the new venture here over at Locked On. Uh, big thank you to Sean Woodley and Tom Lee for this opportunity. Just thank you to everyone uh, for sending well wishes and congratulations. It's mean a lot just to see the support that everyone's brought. Um to me, you know, once the news dropped of me being the host over here, um, you know, hopefully going to keep the legacy that Jared Ellis started, but I'm very, very excited to be here at Locked On covering the Carolina Hurricanes five days a week. So this is going to be a very fun adventure. So in this edition of the show, my first ever here uh, on the helm is that we're you know going to react to the Sunday night win against the Columbus Blue Jackets to finish the home regular season part of the schedule. Also going to talk about the Hurricanes signing Bradley Nadeau out of Maine and kind of touch a little base on the upcoming road trip with four games left in the season all on the road. And the Hurricanes are going to be playing a couple teams they've already faced on this last homestand that they just had. So a lot of fun stuff coming to you on this uh, episode. Um, like I said, just big thank you to everyone who's checked this out. So the Hurricanes on Sunday night, like I said, play the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, the team is unfortunately last in the Metro. The Hurricanes are currently second. But overall, a game of the Hurricanes pretty much dominated from start to finish. Three, they won the game 3-0. Frederick Anson with a 23-save shutout. Goals by you know Andrei Svechikov, Sebastian Ajo, and Tevo Teravainen. Guys you would automatically would probably assume they would score goals. They did took care of business. And like I said, Frederick Anderson gets his third shutout. That's his third in his last seven starts, you know, third in his last eight games since coming back from his blood clotting issue after missing 49 games. I mean, you got, we got to talk about Frederick Anderson <laughs> because you miss 49 games due to the blood clotting issue. You were out, you know, he's been out since like November 4th, comes back March 7th. There was no idea if he was even going to come back for the regular season. And you kind of heard some rumblings around the new year. Maybe it's possible. Then you get into February, then you hear more rumblings that, okay, it could possibly happen. And the next thing you know, it's he's on the ice. You know, he's getting some practice in. You know, there's a good chance that he might come back in March. And then day before the trade deadline, playing against the Montreal Canadiens, it's, the news comes out, he's active and he's starting. And the Hurricanes go out and win that game 4-1. to one. And that's the same night that they go and uh, get Jay Kensel. So overall, two additions to the team that you would love to have, you know, right before the trade deadline. And of course, we know everything that happened with after that, you know, they get a, you know, Gary Kuznetsov, they also get Ty Smith in the trade for Jay Gensel as well. And then the Hurricanes have been on a really huge run. You know, they went 11-2-1 after playing 14 games in 24 days. Then the month of February, they get four days off. They come back and play the last three game, the last three home games of the season here in April. And like I said, Frederick Anderson tonight, 23 safe shutout, you know, third, sh like he's already got three shutouts this year. And I think his record now is like 12, like 12, two and oh, and his like goals against is a sub 1.9 save percentage, like in the nine twenties, nine thirties. Like you could not ask for a better guy to have right now on this roster than Frederick Anderson. 
And even when you know they asked Rod Brendamore about you know Frederick Anderson, who's got like I said three shutouts in his last seven starts. Rod Brendamore said he's been really solid since he's come back. He's steady. He's very calm back there, and think that certainly helps. And I would say it pretty much does help for a guy like Frederick Anderson. You come back in, you know, the Hurricanes, you know, Antti Ranta kind of struggled for a bit, went up and down to Chicago a couple of times, you know, even with Frederick Anderson coming back. You know, Pierre Kachaka goes in, you know, he's he's mostly the main starter, you know, has a couple struggle games, but played really good hockey down the stretch for a little bit as well. You know, had to deal with some injuries as, you know, to himself. You know, Perrette's comes up for a couple of games from the ECHL. And, you know, then the Hurricanes go out on the waiver wire and pick up Spencer Martin from Columbus. And he's played played spectacular, you know, in his starts for the Hurricanes. He's 4-1-0. and oh. So you get Frederick Anderson back. You think, okay, you know, get him in, figure out how he's doing and stuff like that and go from there. And you look at how he's been. And you would think that he hasn't lost a step. Like I said, eight one and zero in his last nine starts. Like a goals against average and like in the like sub one point three save percentage. Like in the nine forties, nine fifties. It's just it's good to see a calming presence. That is Frederick Anderson. Huge saves. You know the guys. The guys seem more relaxed. Like you, you, you know, like they're, you know, they, they, they want to play well for whoever is in net. You know, they play well for Piotr. They even played well for, you know, Father Finn when he was in. And even Spencer Martin, they played well. It just seems like with how Frederick Anderson has been so calm, cool, and collective back there in the net, it feels like the, that the guys in front of them also play calm as well and they play their game. And the, the defense has been shut down. The penalty kill has been absolutely on fire as of late. I think in the last, like, I think in the last 16 of the last 17 games, I don't think they've allowed a power play goal. Like they are, it shows why they're first in the NHL. The penalty kills first in the NHL power plays like third. And they're the only team that is top three in both categories. And I think it contributes to how Frederick Anderson's playing. And you know how much it means for him. It means for the team to go and win tonight. Because it's fan appreciation night. It's the last regular season home game, so you know you got playoff hockey coming in a couple weeks to Carolina. You know you still don't know who that team is right now. It's currently the Islanders. It might be the Flyers. It could be the Capitals. So no, the Hurricanes don't really know who they're playing in the first round of the playoffs. But you know, like it's the last regular season home game. It means a lot. You're doing it for the fans. And the Hurricanes did the thing that they wanted to do. They went out and did the, did the job. They got the win. It's three nothing. They finished the regular season 27, 10 and four in those 41 games, which you love to see, especially if you're a Hurricanes fan, that you can see something like that happen. And the really great thing too, is the fact that all 41 regular season games at PNC were sold out this year. And, if you look at last season, if it wasn't – so for the stadium series, they didn't count that as a, a, a home game for the Hurricanes since it was a neutral site. Neutral site, AHL run event, they don't count that as a home game. But if you if you correlate that to, okay, it was technically in Raleigh because it's next door, the Hurricanes essentially have gone back-to-back seasons of selling out 41 games at home, back-to-back seasons. Second attendance last year. I wouldn't be surprised if they're second again this year or possibly first because last I heard, they've been selling out to 100.6% capacity at PNC. So it goes to show that the guys want to do it here. They want to you know, win for the fans, and they want to go out on a high note and know that there's the Hurricane support. The, just the fact that they know the fans support these guys is really huge. And they even asked Andre Svechnikov about it, about what's it like seeing the fans sold out 41 regular season games in Raleigh. And Andre said, it's huge, man. When I got injured, I felt how much Raleigh loves hockey. It's pretty impressive. Every game this year has been sold out, and they've been huge for us. We definitely need their support. And the guys know it. And I think that they know it, and they that's what they love about being able to play in Carolina. Because even when they asked Frederick Anderson post-game, and he's like, we are, like paraphrasing, we're excited to come here because, you know, we got the fans. They're the best fans in the league, and they even did a tribute video for the fans. And it shows that 
the players know how much it means for them seeing the fans here and the fact that it's how the fact that the Kaniacs went out and sold out all those games, saw the team win 27 of those games, you know, 27 out of 41. Like I said, you lost 10, you, you know, four in overtime, you know, or shootout losses. But the fact you went 27, 10, and four, it's really huge. It's really huge. And the fact that the guys went out and, you know, Andre Svechikov scores 17 seconds in. Sebastian Ajo gets his second power play goal in as many games. Tavo Vine got his 22nd of the year. And like I said, Frederick Anderson gets a shutout. From start to finish, the this team just played a phenomenal hockey. You know, held the Blue Jackets to single decision shots every period. And it was just a complete dominant game. And yes, I know it's the Blue Jackets, but it's still a game that matters. You know, they, you know, the Jackets won't play spoilers. And it's a game where you don't take anyone lightly. There is no easy games anymore in this league. And for the fact that they went out on a fan appreciation night, did the job, did what they needed to do, and got the job done. That's all you really ask for out of the Carolina Hurricanes, and they give it to the fans. Like I said, that's their 27th home win of the season. You know, they finished, like I said, 27, 10, and 4 in 41 games. Every home game is sold out. And now you know your next home game, first round of the playoffs, and you just love to see that. And there's really nothing else you can ask for. I know Jay Forrester over at Locked On. Blue Jackets, probably has a whole different feeling of how this game went. But, you know, as a Hurricanes fan, you, the Hurricanes fans as well, who are listening to the show or watching the show on YouTube, I know you, you're feeling the same thing as well. And if you were at the game or watched the game at home, drop in the comments. Let me know what, you're, what you felt watching the game live in person or listening to it or just watching it on TV. What was it like for you seeing this team go out, dominate, and just get that last home win of the regular season before you get to the playoffs. Because I would love to know everyone's thoughts on that. So up next, we got to talk about the latest signing for the Carolina Hurricanes. It is Bradley Nadu from the University of Maine. We'll talk about that here in a second. Regardless of where we are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Hockey Fantasy Contests. All you have to do is pick rather studs like Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid, or even Sebastian Ajo will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win 100%, 100% bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me. Your Carolina Hur- you Hurricanes fans, you can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Locked On AHL and you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go to Locked On AHL. See sleepers' terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to the Locked On Hurricanes. This is segment two, and we got to talk about the huge signing that just came out on Sunday before the game as well, that the Carolina Hurricanes signed forward from the University of Maine, Bradley Nadu. He was the 30th overall pick by the Carolina Hurricanes in this most recent 2023 NHL entry draft. And, you know, it's it's pretty huge for the fact that this kid has been able to make the jump that he did, going from playing in – Junior A hockey with in the you know British Columbia Hockey League with the Penticton Bees, and you know going to play at University of Maine, you know where he got forty six points in thirty seven NCAA games, nineteen goals, twenty seven assists, and the fact that he led the team in goals and in points. In which the crazy part is, it was the first time since it was like twenty like. 15, 16, or no, 2011, 2012, 
when they had a player hit over, you know, that was the most that any hurt main black bear has gotten in points wise. And it's the first time since 2006, 2007 that anyone hit over 40 points, which is pretty huge. And for the Penticton V's, he had 113 points in 54 games, but just with how he's played at Maine, for the fact that you got the Hockey East second all-team all-star and also the Hockey East all-rookie team, the fact that Bradley Nadeau is 18 and has already made a case to be someone who has gone from 10 months ago playing junior A hockey in, BC, in the BCHL going to play his freshman year at Maine. He's 18, played his freshman year at Maine, did what he did over there, and now not even a few weeks after his season is over, he signs with the Carolina Hurricanes. And in terms of his contract, so it's a three-year entry-level contract. He's going to receive $855,000 at the NHL level through the rest of this year, 24-25, and then 25-26. through 26. And when it comes to his American Hockey League level contract, he's going to receive $82,500 for all three seasons, and he's also going to get a signing bonus of $285 thousand dollars and when then you know general manager don waddell was asked about bradley nadu waddell said bradley is a dynamic forward with a powerful shot he had a very impressive season in maine and we're excited to see his development continue in professional hockey and like i said for the fact that you're 18 years old you didn't you like you just played junior not that long ago in canada you go to the university of maine a good person you know good hockey school you go and you know first 40 point season since like the year that her, you know, the year after the hurricanes won the cup, the first time since 2011, 12, where you had, you know, someone even hit that around that point mark. And then you tie your brother, Josh in assist with 27 is who you also play with at Penticton, who also got a hundred points as well. It goes to show the how good the scouts are for the Hurricanes for the fact that pick 30 in the first round. Everyone talks about first the first five picks are where the main picks are at. And then, you know, if you're the Hurricanes outside of again, like, you know, say Svechnikov or, you know, all these guys, like you kind of have to rely on your scouts. And it shows that the Hurricane scouts really know how to do their job. Like I said, they got Jacob Slavin in the fifth round. Sebastian Ajo was the second round. And people thought that, that was a stretch. And look where Sebastian Ajo's at. And you look, and you know, you like you get Andre Svechikov at the third pick. You get Seth Jarvis in the 2020 draft at 13, and he's on a career year this year where he could possibly hit 70 points. It shows that the scouts know how to do their jobs. They find the players that will fit the system, and they'll find the diamonds in the rough guys that people don't even think of. And that's what they did. They got they found Bradley Nadu out of the BCHL playing for the Benticton V's over 100 points in 50 games and takes him at 30, goes to Maine, kills in his freshman year, automatically signed to a three year contract. Now he's on an ELC for the next three years. And you're just super excited to see how this kid plays because. You know, it's now with the fact he's on a standard player contract. I know people are going to ask. So he's currently on a, on a standard player contract. And for the fact that he wasn't in the AHL by the trade deadline, he is currently ineligible to get sent to the AHL. So he's just an AHL ineligible player just for the fact, like I said, he wasn't in the league by the trade deadline. So they kind of look at the, that this as an ATO, like an amateur tryout, but not really because the fact that he's got the standard player contract attached to it. So he can go to the AHL. So most likely for how this season's going to go, he's going to be with the Hurricanes just like how they did with Scott Morrow out of UMass. Scott Morrow, you know, he got his you know ELC last week. I think it was like on April 2nd. So he's got his. So those two guys are going to be with the Carolina Hurricanes for the rest of the season, and most likely they're going to be black aces for the playoffs. So you're going to have, you know, just Barry Kokaniemi as a probably healthy scratch, just how that's all been. That's a whole different topic um, for another day. Um, you know, Brandon Lemieux, Tony D'Angelo, all those guys are currently healthy extras. If you're looking at black aces in a sense, you're looking at possibly, you know, Scott Morrow and Bradley Nadeau. And, you know, they're going to be there in case you know, guys get sick or injured, all that good stuff. But those are going to be those two guys are most likely going to be 
black aces, but just for the fact that you're going to have them in Raleigh. And even tonight, Bradley was in the building tonight. He was already in Raleigh. You know, they know what they want to do. They want to get him in that room. They want him around Rod, you know, around guys like Sebastian Ajo, Seth Jarvis, Tavo Taravainen, you know, Andre Svechikov. It's like just be and then being around like Jordan Stahl. Being in that locker room right now with those guys and those coaches can only make those guys better, and that's going to be something that's going to be pretty huge for the development of, like I said, Scott Morrow and Bradley Nadu, and just getting them in right now is going to be very beneficial for them. Like I said, they're going to be possible black aces for the playoffs, so you you want to have bodies available and having guys like them, like them not having to be like, okay, are we going to be playing any games? No, just chill out. Go do your thing. It's going to be fine. It's not going to be that big of a deal. So that's going to be huge for them just to be able to go and do that. So it's going to be a good beneficial thing for those guys to be able to just go, go to practice, develop, travel with the guys and stuff like that. That's going to be pretty big for just Morrow and Nadu. And for Nadu, he's actually going to be number – it's official. He's going to be 29. Scott Morrow is officially 56. So – Honestly, a great addition to Bradley Nadu. It's good to see him in Carolina. That's going to be a huge thing um, moving forward. So up next, we are going to come talk about the upcoming road trip because, like I said, we got four games coming up for the, to finish off the rest of the season. And like I said, it's going to be two teams that the Hurricanes have already faced on this previous homestand that just happened um, going from last week to last night on Sunday against the Columbus Blue Jacks. But we'll get into that just here in a little bit. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. EV Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, uh, exhausted kits, and LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, EV Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with EB Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to the last segment of this edition of Locked on Hurricanes. So the Hurricanes got the upcoming road trip where they have four games left in their regular season, and it starts on Tuesday night against the Boston Bruins, who they just played on Thursday at home. Unfortunately, that 4-1 loss, that is basically Freddie's first loss since coming back. But they got them on Tuesday night in Boston as a 7 o'clock puck drop. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how the Hurricanes bounce back from that 4-1 loss back on the fourth against the Bruins. And that was like after four days off, after playing 14 games in 24 days. You know, that's not really, you know, how you want to start your homestand, you know, dropping a game like that to Boston, who, who people think that this could be a Eastern Conference Finals matchup. So you know the guys want to come out, you know, basically due to Boston, what the Bruins did to the Hurricanes at home. Go up there, go to the Garden, and take care of business and get a win up there in Boston. And then they have a couple days off, and then on Friday they play the St. Louis Blues um, on the road in St. Louis. That is an 8 p.m. puck drop. That's going to be a very fun game to see, you know, a central team, you know, kind of later on in the season. Um, so the, the Bruins game is actually going to be on Valley Sports. The Blues game is going to be on Valley Sports and the NHL Network. Um, it's kind of curious to see where the Blues are going to be at in terms of that because when you look at how the standings are in terms of where the Blues sit, they are right now fifth in the Central Division. In terms of the playoffs, they're only they're seven points back with five games left. So it's going to be very, very tough for the Blues. And, you know, they're, they're going to be coming out swinging in that game. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how the Hurricanes will face the Blues. Potentially you're going to see Jordan Bennington, so you know shenanigans are probably going to happen at some point, um, but it all really just depends on how it plays out. And then they have the day off on Saturday the 13th, and then on the 14th they play the Chicago Blackhawks at 
uh, at the United Center. That is a 6 p.m. puck drop on Sunday, and that's going to be on Valley Sports South as well. Um, that's going to be, you know, the last Sunday regular season home game. So a week from yesterday on Sunday, you know, the Hurricanes will be playing the Chicago Blackhawks in Chicago at the UC. Uh, very interesting how that game is going to go because, you know, the Blackhawks are way towards the bottom of the, you know, the NHL. They're trying to get all their, you know, figuring out how they're going to get the better odds to try to get Celebrini from Boston U. You know, Connor Bernard's been playing really well. They want to see how that plays out. So I think it's going to be an interesting matchup for the Hurricanes, second to last game of the season. Do you potentially see, you know, Bradley Nadeau, Scott Morrow, those guys maybe get games in? Depending on how Rod Brandmore feels with how they're, you know, they've been playing and where the Hurricanes are seeing in, in the Metro, because they still have a shot to go for the Metro Division title. Um, so it roll where this whole week is going to be very interesting. Even before we get into Chicago, how like do the Hurricanes possibly get back in it, or do the Rangers clinch? It all just depends. So next Sunday, depending on how the playoff picture is looking, that could be a game where you could probably see the new guys possibly get a start who really knows that'd be very interesting and then on tuesday the 16th to wrap up the regular season uh the hurricanes are gonna be playing the team they just played on sunday night in the columbus blue jackets this time at nationwide arena to cap off the regular season and you know cap off the last metro game of the year as well um after how this game played out it was three nothing on sunday night I'm curious in the, you know, the fact that they've been, the Black, Blue Jackets have been playing with a lot of injuries. They've been doing a lot of things. You know, they had Malcolm Subban in that which on Sunday night, which was kind of tough. You're kind of at that point going to like your third, fourth goalie, fifth goalie, depending on how you, how you look at it. So that will, it's going to be interesting to see how that Tuesday game on the 16th, the wrap of the season goes, because it could be another game, like I said, on Sunday night against the Blackhawks. You could potentially see you know the Hurricanes – Maybe going with the new guys against the Blue Jackets as well, just like they did against Chicago. It just depends on how the playoff situation is forming out. You know, do you give guys rest? It's going to be very interesting. But those are the four games that are coming up. You got the Boston Bruins. You got the Blue Jackets. Uh, you know, on the 16th, you got the Blues on the 12th, and the Blackhawks on the 14th. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how those four games go with the regular season because the Hurricanes. Like I said, they still have a potential shot of maybe trying to fight their way into a division title because the Rangers do have a game in hand, but they're at 108 points and the Hurricanes are 105. So this last week of games, you know, the last like you know this week and the two games next week, you've got four games left. You're only three back with a game in hand. Anything is really possible with the Hurricanes. So I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very tight one. But I think it's going to be a fun little four-game road trip right before you go into the playoffs, which start on the 20th. So a week from this Saturday, you're talking first game of the playoffs. And by then, you may know who you're facing. Like I said, it could be the Islanders. could be the Flyers. It could be the Capitals. It all just depends on who wants that third spot in the Metro. But that will wrap up this edition of Locked on Hurricanes. I'm Zach Martin. Thank you. To the everydayer, thank you for you know coming to check out this first episode. Hopefully, you become an everydayer. And if you're a Carolina Hurricanes fan, you know just checking out this episode. Thank you so much for taking the time to make this your first listen of the day. Like I said, if you want to be a Kaniac, I would really appreciate it. So if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit subscribe, click on the bell notification, let you, so that way you don't miss an episode, and leave your thoughts in the comments. You know, what you how. Going, you know, going back to the game, what do you think of the game? You know, what are your thoughts on the signing of Brylin Adu and even Scott Morrow? And how do you feel about the upcoming road trip? So drop in the comments. I would love to read them, you know, and interact with you guys. That's I want to try to make this an interactive podcast. So leave your thoughts on everything that I talked about in this episode. I'm really excited to come back on, you know, to drop you another episode on Tuesday and just talk about more Daily Hurricanes content. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on Twitter at one true Zach. That's only true Zach is actually spelled out. It's not the number itself. Um, if you you know want to subscribe to the podcast, please do on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you can think of. Make sure to drop those. And if you leave a five star rating and review on the podcast for Apple Podcasts, you might I might read it on the show for you guys. So please make sure to leave a five star rating and review. Like I said on YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell, drop comments, all the good stuff. But 
like I said, thank you to everyone to make this your first listen of the day. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and let's go Hurricanes.